Hello friends, Cheryl here with Ink Pulp and it's another Art Before Breakfast. I've already finished my coffee, so I don't have my coffee with me, but uh, I do have the caffeine in me, which is good. So today I'm going to do something, again, a little bit different. Um, I had, and this is old, this is from February 2016, I used to purchase some things, and if you've never looked at this website, go take a look at American Science and Surplus. It They have the coolest things in there, and a lot of this stuff can be used for art. Like, here's some artist brushes, um, set of 15 for $3.95. They've got, you know, it's not the highest quality stuff, but... For some of it, for what we use it for, it's just fine. So what I had originally intended was, this was back when I was doing mixed media, and I was going to do an art journal out of this. So I had glued a bunch of pages together to make them thicker because the, the paper's um, pretty thin. So I think I was gluing like two pages together. Um, ex yeah, I even did that on the inside. So... I had started this, and my first page, i got to sand that down. My first page was this real pretty uh, tree stencil that I used texture paste in. I don't know what I was going to do with it. Maybe put some birds in there. I don't know. I don't know exactly what I was going to do with it. But um, I made this real nice background and then did that texture paste. And that's all I ever did in this thing. So I thought, why not use it? So I pulled out the middle folio. And I'm going to make a journal page to go in a journal. So again, if you want to check them out, American Science and Surplus. And if you order anything from them, you'll get on their list. Oops. And you will get um, their catalog. All right. So I'm going to first, this is really tall. This thing is 10 and a half inches tall, which is much taller than I would make a journal. So I'm going to bring it down to, let's see, eight inch. Well, let's do eight and a half because that would be as tall as pages if I had... Um, So we're gonna go eight and a half. So it would be the same as a, um, a a sheet of copy paper as far as the height. Now, I'm not gonna throw this away. I've got this little piece here. I'm sure that I can do something with this. Make a little, I don't know, make a couple of belly bands. Um, I'm sure I can do something with that. So I'm not gonna throw that away. All right, now I have this. And I'm going to start by just decorating the outsides of this um, folio. Actually, let's just do this. And I'm going to use a piece of that beautiful paper that I got from Shelly W. Johnson Junk. And I showed that in yesterday's Art Before Breakfast. And you all know how much I love my neutrals, so I'm going to stick with a neutral color. I thought about doing the blue one, but for right now I'm going to do neutral. And um, you see it's perfect. It's eight and a half. So I'm going to... Let's see what kind of glue I want to use. I'm going to use some tacky glue around the outside, just to make sure that it stays down really good. And then I think I will go to my sewing machine real quick and sew it once I get it down, or maybe I'll do it after, we'll see. And today I'm planning to use up some of my pre-made ephemera. Um, because I was talking to somebody, oh, I think it was Shelly, actually. We were chatting over Facebook chat. Um, I was showing her how to use StreamYard, y'all, because she's going to start doing online sales on YouTube, which I think is really exciting. So let's put this in the middle. Um, and we were talking about 
you know, when you make ephemera for a journal. If you sit down to make ephemera, and you'll see me do that too, I'll get a theme in mind, whether it's, you know, vintage or birds or botanical. If I'm making up a bunch of ephemera, I'll get a theme in mind, and so everything I make in that session kind of comes out the same. Well, you don't necessarily want everything the same when you um, are doing a journal. Like, um, she was noting that the 600 subby giveaway journal that I did was very eclectic. It had all sorts of themes in it. I'm just moving this thing to get it lined up here. It had all sorts of themes in it. And, you know, I switched every few pages. I might do a couple of things, but, you know, there was botanical, there was the ladies in there. Um, there was, you know, just a little bit of everything. And I said, the way I do that, because I'm the same way, if I sit down and just start making ephemera, it will all come out the same. And she said, that's what happens to me. I want to do a journal and she sits down to make the ephemera for that journal and it all kind of comes out looking the same because that's the mode she's in for that working session oh i took my scissors upstairs i don't have my big scissors down here um so i so said the way i get around that is i make up a lot of stuff and then i just store it because one time i might you know pull out my Your Creative Studios box and then things will all sort of look like that. But then I, you know, put them in my finished ephemera um, box. And when I go to make a journal, and I'll show you some of my, I have a couple of boxes. I'll show you one here in just a minute. I'm gonna cut just a hair off the bottom of this. Okay. All right. So, here is my ephemera box, and I have it separated. My first section is journal cards, and they go from tiny, tiny little journal cards all the way up to, you know, really big stuff, and they're all different. You know, some are, you know, floral, like this one. Um... Some are double journal cards, like this one. Um, they're, they're just, some are more vintage, like this one. They're just all over the place. And when I get ready, here's some guest checks that I altered. I see I need to, oh, these were stickers and they didn't stay down. I'll have to go back and stick those. That's the other thing, if you store them, you can kind of see where the glue might come up after a while. Um, like some of these are years, a couple years old. Um, so anyway, that's my journaling cards. And then my next section is tags. So in here I have all the tag shapes. And again, I have from little tiny ones to, oh, look at this one. I did a French knot bouquet. You know, I have little ones all the way up to really big ones. I have ones that I got this um, in with one of my orders. So all sorts of tags. And then my next section is pockets. Okay, so these are all different shapes and sizes of pockets. Oh, look at that, isn't that cute? But then I have, you know, this guy is a side note. He said this way, um, you know, a bird I've got. Here's one that's doesn't have the thumb hole punched yet, but I don't know. I just have, here's an old vintage. Those are pretty colors. Um, and then my next section is envelopes. Look at this envelope. Isn't this pretty? This is made with wallpaper. And it's got that little bit of Velcro to hold it down. So I've just got all sorts of envelopes in here. Some have stuff in them, some don't. 
This is an envelope I made way back when I, this is one of the first things I ever made. And I think I was following the paper outpost. Um, now I put bags in with envelopes and you guys may have seen me make these. These are glassine bags. Um, here's one of those, a couple of those teapot envelopes like I put into my 600 subby journal big envelopes. I have these great big ones. So anyway, envelopes. The next section is notepads. And these are just little scrappy notepads. Some of them are really little, you know, some are like little booklets that open up. I like this one. This one's covered in fabric and sewed. So just little scrappy notepads and then I also have some that are bigger like this one okay, and oh it's got a pocket on the inside on both sides so there's some little scrappy pads then I have belly bands and again I just have various this is one that I made very recently and something you might have seen that here's one that's got I think I made this one recently too I think I don't know where I made it. I think in one of my more art before breakfast. But anyway, those are belly bands. And then I don't have a tab for it yet, but then I have journal pages and covers. And so here's something that could be used for a journal page. I did make this one recently. Um, this one is actually a cover. I haven't finished decorating. This one is a cover. So I just have all this pre-made ephemera. And then I have another whole box of just tags back from when I did the 100 day project and I made a, you know, tags for 100 days. So I've got tons of tags. So I make up all this ephemera. And then when I go to do a journal, I can pull bits and pieces. And that way the ephemera doesn't all look the same. You know, I can pull different styles, different colors, different themes, um, but I have all of that made. And a lot of times, I don't want to sit down and work on a whole journal at, at the time. I just want to make some ephemera. So I will, you know, do like I'm doing here and just go in. I cut that a little bit crooked. Um, and just go in and make up, you know, in this case, we're going to make a journal page. So there it is. I have no clue what I'm going to do with this page, but here's how I would start. I would say, well, let's put maybe a bag on that page. That's a nice big one. And then let's think about either a tag or a journal card to go in that. And the thing here is you have to be careful because they have to not be wider than your bag. If you're going to do a bag. Um, not way too wide. Oh, how about one of these guest checks? We could do that one. I'm going to have to glue down those stickers. I'm actually going to use the tacky glue because it holds better, I think. And when I say tacky glue, this is not art glitter glue. I do have some, and I will get back to using it. But I had all of this tacky. It's Aileen's tacky glue. And I had all of this left from... Um, my mixed media days and it was still good the glue was still good and so I decided um, to use it up before I open up my next art glitter glue so when I say tacky glue it's um, Aileen's tacky glue and this stuff is really good I mean once it grabs it's not coming up you'll tear what's underneath if you try to pull it up okay there we go Nothing else is coming up, but if we take this page 
And we put our guest check in here. It fits just perfectly, and I may want to put a, you know, a tab on that, but we can start with that, and then, I don't know, we'll look at some other things to do with it. So, what do I want to do in the background? I've been doing a lot of stenciling lately, and I use this stencil almost exclusively in that 600 subby giveaway, and I love this stencil absolutely love it so let's do some stenciling get this out of the way and I love this paper of she Oops, excuse me I had a hiccup I love this paper of Shelley's because it um, is is heavier than copy paper now, um, granted, I put it down on that folio from the American Scientific, you know, catalog, and that was double pages, so it was heavy too, but this paper from Shelley is not just lightweight copy paper. It's, it's a nice weight, and um, I don't know if it was in her description, um, and Shelley, if you watch this, if you want to put the weight of your paper in the comments, you're welcome to do that in case anybody else wants to get some of this lovely paper. It's really pretty. And it's a really nice weight. So it's not, if you use it for journal pages, it's it's not gonna buckle like regular lightweight copy paper would. Let's see, I don't have to go all the way up the middle because I am going to put that glassine envelope on there. And I find that sometimes, and I've been finding this um, on some of my recent projects, that glue does not, even if I use the um, Fabri-Tac, oh, isn't that pretty? It doesn't necessarily hold down the glassine bags. So I have resorted to using um, Look at that. Isn't that pretty? What a pretty journal page this will make. And we definitely need to ink it up. I love these little finger daubers. You know how sometimes when you ink up the edge of a page, if it's a real thin piece of paper, it just bends and you can't get the ink on it. And like I said, this is... Um, Pretty sturdy paper. And down the edge. Now, because this has holes already in it, I may want to, well, I'm going to wait until I actually get ready to use it before I do that. I was thinking I would put a piece of washi tape and fold it over to strengthen. Um, although, I don't think that's coming apart, but still, um, I probably want to strengthen that. But I don't know which washi tape I want to use yet. So, we'll just do this. Oh, the other thing I think I want to do. Now, this is really flimsy. is maybe darken up that flap. I just left it when I created the the bag. So there we go. So that'll fit in a little bit better. All right. And then we have this. Oh, I just thank you on the back so somebody can journal on the back of that. Um, let's see. What else? Um... I probably want to put something at the top here. Not sure just what. Does that match? That matches. That's some sorry silk that I could put a piece of. Let's 
actually let me make it a little bit longer I think what I'm going to do on this one is just staple it on I'm just going to gather it up that might be too oops I'm probably going off camera it might be too thick so I'm going to tear it down Twist it. There we go. And then I'm going to just take my tiny attacher and I'm going to put a couple of staples in this. Because sometimes staples just look good. There we go. Okay, and if I want to cut those down a little bit, I certainly can once the project is done. So there's a little topper and it matches. So you see, I don't do all neutrals. I got some greens in here. Um, love that. Now, I want something down the side and something that I had been doing before and I completely forgot about it until I went through that first journal that I ever made. And that is like putting a strip of ribbon uh, maybe a couple of strips with some lace on the top. Uh, so let me look in my ribbon drawer here. Oh, you know what I have? I have some ribbons from one of my sales. Ooh, and I could cut this down if I need to, but look at this. Isn't that pretty? And it goes with the green theme, and I don't think I need to cut it down, although I might want to put like a piece of lace down the middle of it. Make sure I cut that. All right, so let's, this is gonna be tricky because Fabri-Tac will um, seep through. Let me see if I have my, I have a silicone brush thingy, but I'm gonna just use a palette knife so that I can spread it. And I'm just gonna go down both edges. I'm not gonna go down the middle. I don't think I need to. I'm just gonna take this Fabri-Tac once I get the um, extra gunk off of it. There we go. Let's take that Fabri-Tac, run it down both sides. Make sure I'm in the frame here. And y'all, this is all just off the cuff. I had no plan when I came in here other than to use one of the pages out of this um, catalog that I had started making a journal. That was the only plan I had that I was gonna make a journal page. The rest, and it's so easy when you have pre-made ephemera because you can just go through and pick something. And my baby wipe out here and I don't want to get any glue on the back of my page. Okay, let's put this down. there and it didn't seep through because I spread it out and made it you know thin so that's right there at the edge we'll cut off the extra at the top and bottom if it's not glued all the way down you can put just a little bit more glue the other thing that works really good um, with stuff like this is double-sided tape I've, used, I've started using a lot more of it, especially with my glassine stuff. All right. All right, so there's that. Love it. Now, I wanna put something down the middle, like a piece of lace. I would love to put some yellow and pick up the little yellows in here and the yellow in the bag, but I don't know what I have. 
So I'm just turning around behind me. I've got this huge bin of lace. Ooh, look at this one. This is a trim, and it's got yellow and green in it. And some purples. Look at how pretty that is. Now, I wonder, what if I put this lace down the middle? I'm not sure if the purple goes with this, though. It's very springy. Hmm. No, I think I'm going to stick to just the lace. There's too much... Um, the purple, there's no purple in this at all, so I think it would not be the right um, color mix for that. It is pretty, though. It is really pretty. All right, so let's figure out which side is the front, which side is the back, which is easier said than done sometimes. I think this is the back. And um, the way I put glue on for lace, and this may not be the right way, I don't glue the whole thing. Some people just run glue down their, um, you know, piece. And I do that sometimes, but I don't like all that glue poking through. So what I typically do, I'll, I'll, if there's a solid, like this is a solid backing, I'll just run a tiny bead of glue down there. Um, so that we can get that down really well. And I try not to get too much on here because it will seep out. And then I got to get out my glue eraser. Now, sometimes I'll go around because there's flowers on here that have a lot of thread. So I'll put just a little bit of glue around that. And I don't glue the very edge necessarily because a lot of times it doesn't need it. It's not going to flop up. And um, if it does, if I find that it, it is flopping up, then I can um, go back and add a few dots of glue later. But I, I use as little glue as possible when gluing down lace. All right, let's flip this baby over. And put it down. Right down the middle of that. Now, I'll tell you one other thing that helps me to get it straight is like pull the lace because sometimes this back spine wants to bend and wants to curve, um, especially if it was on a spool or, or something else. So I just kind of pull it tight and then we'll cut off. You guys, so tomorrow I'm having a sale. I have been dismantling a wedding dress. That's going to be the primary focus of my sale. I've got tons of appliques. And now see, this is too floppy right up here at the top. So I'll take just a little bit of glue and go across there. But as far as these down here, they're fine. It's just the, even at that bottom, it's fine. I might put just a little, little dot of glue under that. And there we go. Fairly straight. Again, I'll pull it to make sure it goes straight. Now, you can still see a little bit of glue seeping through. I think you're not going to ever get rid of that 100%. And you just got to live with it. But this little glue that's out here on my ribbon, I can certainly take that off. Now, look at that. Is that not gorgeous? Let me get my, here's my tape. And I have this real thin, um, I use this for my night lights for putting the vellum on my, on the inside of my night lights. So the light is softened a little bit. So I'm just gonna put some little strips of tape around the outside, and then I'll do like an X 
in the middle to get the middle part to make sure it sticks down. But I'm just going around, putting down this double-sided tape. It's a lot less messy than glue, too. And put one right across the top here. Oh, shoot, and I tore it. It's all right. I'll just put a piece of tape down that tear so that when we lay it down, it will be covered up. And then I'm just going to do, and if you have wider tape, you can use it. I just use this really skinny um, tape. Now, be careful here when you're making your X. You don't want to tape over the top of this piece because this still has the backing on it and you won't be able to get it off. So either take the backing off and then put your X down or just put two separate pieces. Does that make sense? All right, now comes the fun part, getting off the backing. That's always the challenge. Oh, that one went easy. Um, now, when you put this down, this is very unforgiving, so you're not going to be able to move it if you use the double-sided tape. So be careful with that and make sure it's, you know, you're checking it before you actually put it down. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. So get all of these pieces off. up the whole thing so if one side isn't behaving I'll go down to the other side and then I got a couple of pieces up here where I tore it and you'll never be able to see it Come on. and this bit of backing okay I'm gonna actually take the tag out of the middle because we don't need that now, when I said, like, try it, you want to kind of, I'm not touching the paper yet. Take it by, you know, opposite corners and just make sure. And even when I do this, I still don't get it exactly right sometimes. But get it the best you can and then press down. And that's not coming up. That looks pretty straight. And we'll put this in here. Now, I could do other things, like I could go put some halfback pearls down this page, or some buttons, or I could put a bow up here, or some words. I'm going to leave this as it is for now, because I don't know where I'm going to use it. So um, I'm just going to leave this and put this in my page, and I may come back later and do this one. Um, on the inside, uh, I can leave this and decorate over it to have some nice um, vintage, they're, well, they're not vintage, but some nice ads there. Um, or I can cover the pages and do whatever. But the front of that um, journal page is now done. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And again, when I sat down, I had no clue other than I knew I wanted to make a journal page. So... Um, you know, that's the benefit of having some pre-made ephemera is that you can just go pull from your box. I didn't have to make the tag. I didn't have to make the pocket. Um, I just focused on decorating around it. So there it is, ladies. Art before breakfast. I love this piece. I absolutely love it. Um, so enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.